What do you do when your kid refuses to eat something suddenly? How do you repurpose leftovers into something new and exciting? Well, hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I actually did with the excess baby oatmeal to transform those into something delicious and brand new for my baby girl. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you guys are notified every single time we post a new video. My daughter recently started refusing the Gerber baby oatmeal and it says the expiration date is next month. Because our family are such cookie lovers, I decided to make some moist cookies with uh, the remaining oatmeal. Leftover oatmeal cookies are super easy to make and a great way to use up the remaining oatmeal. Now let's get started. Set your oven to 350 degrees. Now grab a bowl and some raisins then just add some hot water and set them aside. They'll become plump and juicy. Now you could also go for cranberries, blueberries, actually nuts would work too. For these cookies, I'll be using two cups of the Gerber baby oatmeal, two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one cup unsalted butter, one cup white sugar, one cup brown sugar, two eggs, and one teaspoon vanilla extract. Now let's cream together the butter and sugar. Make sure the butter is softened so that it mixes together with the sugar well. Then add in the room temperature eggs and vanilla extract and blend until smooth. Now in a separate bowl, uh, stir in the dry ingredients, grab a whisk and whisk it until really well blended. Next, add the dry ingredients into the butter, sugar and egg mixture and mix them together until uh, just combined. Make sure you don't overmix. Now for the oatmeal, add 2 cups of oatmeal and mix together thoroughly. Remember those raisins from earlier? Drain them, then just gently press down to remove any excess water. Add them to the cookie batter. Use a spatula or spoon to stir everything together. Grease two cookie sheets with baking sprays. I used softened butter on the sheet in even strokes with a pastry brush. And I had only one cookie sheet so I had to make two batches. You can scoop or roll the cookies as big or little as you like. Just before baking, lightly press balls of dough down onto the baking sheet with a fork or simply use the tip of your fingers to help them spread and bake into perfectly shaped cookies. This recipe makes about 20 cookies. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes in preheated oven until the edges are light golden brown and still soft in the center. Allow cookies to cool on baking sheet for 5 to 10 minutes before transferring to a cooling rack to cool completely. Your cookies are now ready to eat. Enjoy with your little one and family. If you enjoyed watching this video, share with your loved ones and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Here is the complete recipe for you again. Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I am going to be doing a packing video. Okay, you guys are gonna see what and how I pack for my three-year-old. So I made a part of this video before our last vacation but never finished it because I thought it was not good enough. But now that all the spring cleaning is done and with all the time in the world and not much to do in this self-quarantine and isolation spell, I decided to finish editing this one. So I have everything we need for the most part right here. 
But before we start the video, I want you guys to like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you guys are notified every single time we post a new video. Packing for kids can be so overwhelming. I mean, it can take, it can be a lot to think about. So I'm going to take you through my steps that I go through in order to get started. I'm going to be starting off packing her daily essentials on one side and her clothes on the other side. I have all her stuff right here and I'm going to try and link all of them down below so you guys can purchase them if you want to. The first thing I do is I correlate how many days our trip is versus how many outfits I'm going to need. I always take two extras. We know kids can get real messy at times. So for a two days trip, I'm going to pack four outfits. And when I pack her outfits, I always go for pieces that I can mix and match and layer. Like I grab a pair of leggings that can go with two different shirts or one dress that goes with multiple lengths. I try to limit shoes to just one pair and one slipper and for shoes I'll pick a pair that is versatile enough to wear for all days if possible. Very important, uh, you carry a laundry bag to put the dirty clothes in. Arby loves to carry her backpack so I'm gonna stash some of these on the go snacks in her backpack. It is absolutely important that you travel with enough snacking options for your little one. I generally prefer carrying crackers, cereals, yogurt melts, um, cookies. I mean, these are things she enjoys. She loves eating. Books are your greatest tool in keeping your child's creative mind engaged while traveling. Sketchbooks and stickers are a great source of entertainment too. I got a couple of her favorite playbooks and a couple of magic sketchbooks which should keep her attention for at least a good one hour on the train. And for a mess free travel I'll avoid taking her toys but I might consider carrying her sleeping toys um, but I'll come back to them in the end. Meanwhile, if something crosses my mind, I try to make a list and write it down so that I don't miss out on the important things while I'm busy doing it all. Normally, I don't let her use my iPad. I use these only specifically for travel because, you know, it does come to a point when your kid is like, I'm done with all this. This is getting boring. Where is my movie? Uh, and you never know how long you're gonna be out there for even on the flight you know there are delays and stuff like that so this really helps and the cool thing about YouTube is you can download a video beforehand and watch it offline and you don't need internet for it so I always make sure to download some of our favorite shows for the road There's one thing I'm questioning now if I should have bought one of these kids headphones for her. Maybe I'll get one for our next vacation. Let me know if any of you are using one of these kids headphones and uh, how effectively does it limit volume levels. So that is all for what I pack and tips on traveling with kids. Uh, I hope you find this video useful as always if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any tips on traveling with kids feel free to leave them down below in the comments thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time until then stay home stay safe bye Hello everyone, I am the mom behind the camera for RV and acquaintances. 
and today I'm going to be doing a highly requested video about uh, how to become a brand rep. I'm going to share my experience with you and some tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. I am currently brand rapping for uh, two companies and my uh, daughter is rapping for uh, five companies right now. What really sparked my interest in getting RV into brand wrapping is uh, was when she was six months old. Uh, she got selected by Huggies Arabia for one of their social media campaigns. It was a baby yoga campaign, yeah. And uh, before that, my collaboration with uh, Radisson Blue, I was selected as one of the social ambassadors for a charity campaign. And uh, that was when I actually fell in love with the whole idea of brands approaching you and making you a part of their uh, social media campaigns. I then went on to collaborate with uh, the best-selling Korean uh, skincare brand, The Face Shop, uh, Reef Resort in Bahrain, um, Vivanta Vaitaj and Maniver Mohe in India, to name a few. So number one and the most important thing, what is brand wrapping? Now, brand wrapping is a way for brands to use people like you and me on social media to promote and advertise their business to people that they wouldn't normally reach. A brand rep, brand enthusiast, or brand ambassador, whatever you choose to call them, these are terms to describe someone who represents a brand or store and help promote them on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube for a compensation that could be a set of money, it could also be special discounts, percentages of sales, free product, or something else you come up with in exchange for high quality pictures and posting them on their Instagram account or other social media accounts. important to keep in mind that before you start working with any brand or store whatever your compensation and uh, the brand's expectations from you as well as the predetermined length of time for the role whatever it is make sure everything is clearly outlined in your contract normally the brand rep will be in contract for a period of three months if things work out for both it gets extended for a longer period of time that both parties agree on After all my years of experience, uh, both as a brand enthusiast and as a blogger, what I've learned is that your photo quality is everything. This is by far the most important aspect to being a brand rep. Your photos need to be clear, crisp, bright and preferably shot in natural light or on a plain clutter-free background. Composition, background and light are what matter the most. Whether you're shooting with your iPhone or a DSLR, figure out where you're going to get the best shot and practice until you get it right. Once you're sorted with the photographs, the next crucial thing to keep in mind are hashtags. It creates great visibility for a campaign and helps you reach your target audience. Now using relevant hashtags on your post, for example, hashtag brand wrap will help you connect with more brands who search for brand reps for their store or campaign. You can use up to 30 hashtags on your posts and uh, up to 10 hashtags on a story. Another useful tip for brand wrapping is to tag the brand or store on your photos. If you are ever posting a photo of your baby at a place or of an item on Instagram, make sure to tag respected companies. A lot of time the brand or company will come in below and ask if they can use that photo. At least that's what happened to us and uh, that's how it kind of started. We'd post a photo of RV, tag the brand and the brand would say, Hey, we really like your photo and your baby is adorable. Do you mind if we share? And I would always say yes.
The best part of all uh, is that you not only get to be a part of a brand's innovation and support, you also get to add the experience to your resume and possibly make some money while you're at it. You decide your own hours, uh, so you ultimately decide how much or how little you're going to get out of your time in the role. Being a brand enthusiast can help you build your network because introducing yourself to so many people opens up the door for opportunities in the future. Plus you get to support and meet new mamas on all of the amazing teams uh, you rep for. As a photographer, it also helps me to showcase some of my skills and style in developing my brand. However, there are some disadvantages. Now it sounds easy and can be heaps of fun, but it's a lot of work to do. It requires a lot of patience and time in a situation uh, where my daughter doesn't want to be photographed and you have to love social media, you know. It takes up a lot of your time uh, because you have to constantly post, like, comment, promote, engage, coordinate, or reply to your DMs and mails and all of that kind of stuff. If you cannot commit to doing that, then brand rep is definitely not for you. Again, don't brand rep for a company that you do not support. I want to be clear that not all shops provide free items. Uh, if you are in this for free stuff, that's not the goal. We love promoting brands and all of the brands that RV and I represent are brands that we feel passionate about. I love getting cute stuff for both of us every now and again and that's the main reason why I started doing this. We do have some brands that we rep for uh, where they have a purchase requirement where we get really, really good discounts and we have other brands that send us free item every month and they just expect great pictures, at least three high quality pictures in return. Having a cute kid is a plus, but really all kids are beautiful, cute and adorable. Do not take it personally if your child is not selected. Sometimes the styling and photography may not be in line with the brands. Oh, well, uh, that's all I have for uh, tips and tricks on uh, how to become a brand rep. Uh, if there is something specific about brand wrapping uh, that I did not touch on, make sure uh, you leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer all your questions. Maybe I'll see you all in the brand wrapping world soon. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back. Well, I guess by now you know that we moved to Germany from Bahrain last year. Um, I've not yet been, I've not yet managed to write or talk about uh, our big move. So far, we've lived in three different countries and in this video, I'll share some of our thoughts and things you should consider before and after moving and living in a different country based on our experience. But as always, before I start the video, I want you guys to like, subscribe and turn on the post notification so you guys are notified every single time we post a new video. Moving and living in different countries is a completely different experience compared to visiting a destination. Thanks to the internet, there is a wealth of resources available online that you can check to get a good idea of what you should expect to be earning as well as the cost of living, transport, health service and more. Although it is important to research your chosen destination carefully, you won't know what it is really like to live there until you have actually made the move. You'll need to give yourself at least a year or more in the destination to decide whether it is right for you and your family. Always remember that um, before moving on an extended trip outside the country, make a comprehensive list of everything you need to do ahead of time. All too often people forget about obvious tasks on the big move. 
It is essential to take into consideration every part of your own lives um, from settling legal and financial accounts to saying goodbye to family and friends. In Germany, the quest for domestic bliss begins with finding the right house or apartment. After our failed experience with an Airbnb host, we found our deal through City Wohn in Hamburg uh, one week after we moved to Germany. A quick and easy solution is to find a service department, um, a short-term furnished, a short-term furnished rental that will take much of the stress out of the move, and they also help you settle into your new destination with uh, tips on transport, local amenities, where to eat, things to see, neighborhoods, and more. Now, if you're moving overseas with kids. You want to make sure the childcare in the destination country has a safe, happy environment um, that supports both the intellectual and emotional development of your expat child. Knowing the types of childcare services, assess reliability, knowing the cost, education options around for expats, these are some of the concerns for any parent choosing to move their family overseas. The answers to these sorts of questions are neither clear nor easy, but with a little foresight, we can at least weigh up the pros and cons of taking our children abroad, so that we go into our move with informed and open eyes. Knowing the healthcare system of your new country should be the priority on your list. Healthcare varies a lot in different countries and depending on the country you will have to fulfill different conditions. Where should you go first if you get sick? Also you can't assume um, that you will be automatically covered by the healthcare system. In some countries you even must purchase health insurance to live there. There are lots of excellent expatriate websites and blogs that provide a wealth of information on healthcare for expat families. Being contactable at all times is vital when setting up home in a new country. To communicate with housing agents, Uber drivers, government officials and restaurants and at the same time to avoid heavy roaming charges, it is convenient to get a local SIM pack on the first day or two of arriving in your destination country. Depending on where you're moving to, uh, you need to be careful so that the first couple of weeks don't feel like a holiday. Sure, you should go and see the main attractions to trigger some excitement, but be sure to make an appointment with the embassy or consulate or register your residence with the relevant authority or somebody else connected with your move within the first week. It will be a reminder of why you're moving there in the first place. There are numerous factors to take into consideration uh, when it comes to moving overseas and choosing a neighborhood for your expatriate family it requires extra care. If you have kids, it makes sense to live near uh, the schools they'll be attending, proximity to work and schools, grocery stores, social venues, medical services and similar issues affect your neighborhood selection in more ways than one. If you enjoy staying fit, with daily workouts in the great outdoors, well, you should choose a neighborhood that offers you the opportunity to participate in outdoor activities, uh, such as park where you can run or cycle, or close to a beach, maybe uh, with good waves for surfing. English is a fantastic language to have at your disposal as it's spoken in a huge amount of countries as one of the official languages but it's important to pick up the local language because you know communication is vital and if you can't speak a single word of the local language you'll quickly start to use your hands and feet instead situations turn from being slightly unusual and more often than not a little embarrassing there are, then there are situations when your child is ill but finding a doctor who speaks English may not always be possible. 
So yes, it's always advisable to sign up for a language class when settling down in your new country. For those of us who live abroad, uh, moving to a new country comes with a host of challenges from weird cultural quirks to finding a place to live. But one of the toughest is meeting new people. Joining groups on social networking sites and meetups are a good point to start making new friends. This worked for us every time we moved to a new country. Can't say we made any lifelong friends, but at least we got to go out and do fun stuff. If you want to add on to these tips and talk about your experience or if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video if you find it useful. Share with someone you think will find this useful and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos from us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one very soon. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sanchali and I'm the mom behind the camera for RV and Acquaintances. It's a sunny weekend here in Offenbach, so today we decided to take RV out for a little trip after a long time. Mom, we're going to the farm! Now, there are lots of cool summer activities for kids and families going on in Germany, but when we asked RV what she wanted to do for the weekend, uh, she said she wanted to meet Piggy and Parsi. Of course, my animal loving baby she is. Um, and so now we are taking her to Dattenfelderhof, which is an organic farm situated north of Frankfurt. We hope to see some farm animals and locally sourced produce, fruits and vegetables. We'll try to share with you our exciting experience of visiting the farm and I'll also try to share some benefits of taking your kids to the farm. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell if you're new here because we have more of our summer activity videos coming up for you guys. Most children do not really know where food comes from. A visit to the farm uh, will expose them and make them understand the origin of what they eat. Visiting a farm has been on my list of things to do for quite a while now. I wanted RV to gain an appreciation for where our food comes from as well as uh, foster a deep understanding about caring for animals and plants. For young minds, farms act as educational playgrounds. By visiting the farm, uh, your child gets to be very active. It's a great way to get your kid walking and running. Being active is not only fun, it also promotes a healthy lifestyle. It gives them an opportunity to get outside and play while learning. In the organic farm Dattenfelderhof, uh, we got to see different tractors, harvesters and more. These unique farm visits introduces your child to a world of discoveries uh, in what they get to see, feel and they are able to understand the theoretical information they acquired in the books. Now, there are so many ways to boost your baby's sensory and cognitive development. This happens when children feel an animal's texture such as its fur and its hay. They will always be able to feel how smooth or rough some of the fruits and vegetables are. By doing this, they can enjoy themselves and also improve their senses as their minds are also put to task.
Children are little scientists. Farms offer so many opportunities for kids to learn about science. It encourages your child to observe the world and to feel a sense of wonder for everything in it. There is so much science involved in planting and growing fruits and vegetables. Animal science is also introduced at farms as kids learn what animals thrive on a farm as well as what they eat and how they interact. By being exposed to different kind of animals or crops in the farm, children are able to improve their vocabulary. Farm animals have been a go-to teaching tool in children's books for centuries and research has shown that children who have been exposed to farm animals from a young age tend to be better listeners, perform well in school and get along with people very well. Kids need to learn about nutrition and healthy food choices. Start the conversations about the best way to choose healthy foods. Explain in detail why you choose the option that you do and they'll build connections with the food in front of them when they see the production with their little eyes during these farm visits. Almost all the children love listening to stories. These farm tours are perfect story time for your little one. You can also sing Old MacDonald had a farm to them or remind them of the sheep, ducks and horses from the storybook. Beyond the story time, there are ample opportunities for children and adults to learn so much from these farm visits. I hope my video has inspired you to seek out a farm to visit near you or if you ever visit this part of the world, be sure to visit Dot and Feller House. I'll see you all next time with yet another summer activity. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.